Hello, my name is Kix, and today we are going to be looking at my homebrew sorcerer subclass for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So let's start with the core features of the sorcerer. Hit points, uh, 1d6. Uh, starting proficiencies. You are proficient with the following. Armor, none. Weapons, daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. Tools, none. Saving throws, constitution, and charisma. And skills, you get to choose two. From Arcana, Deception, Insight, Intimidation, Persuasion, and Religion. Starting equipment, you start with a light crossbow and 20 bolts, or any simple weapon. You get a component pouch or an arcane focus. You get a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack, and you get two daggers. So let's start with level 1. Level 1, you get spellcasting. An event in your past or in the life of a parent or ancestor left an indelible mark on you, infusing you with arcane magic. This font of magic, whatever its origin, fuels your spells. See chapter 10 for the general rules of spellcasting and chapter 11 for the source of the spell list. Cantrips. At first level, you know four cantrips of your choice on the source of a spell list. Learn an additional source of a cantrip of your choice at fourth level and another at tenth level. Source of table shows how many spell slots you have. Blah blah blah. We know about spell slots. You know two first level spell slots of spells of your choice from the source of a spell list. You learn an additional source of spell of your choice at each level except 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, and 20. When you gain a level in this class, you can choose one of the source of spells you know and replace it with another. Your spellcasting ability is Charisma, and you can use a spellcasting focus. And then, your sorceress origin. Choose a sorceress origin. The choice grants you features when you choose at first level, and again at 6th, 14th, and 18th level. So, my subclass is the sorceress origin, Mimic Mage. So, at first level, you gain the ability Spell Mimicry. A Mimic Mage intuitively understands how to cast spells from experiencing their effects. When a spell is cast on you that does not require a saving throw, and you can see the caster, you may choose to make a Charisma check, DC 15 plus spell level. If you succeed the check, you learn how to cast the spell until you complete a long rest. When a spell that requires a saving throw is cast on you, you may change the saving throw required to a Charisma save. If you succeed, you learn how to cast a spell until you complete a long rest. But if you fail, you overstress your mind and you take psychic damage equal to twice the spell's level plus the damage you would have normally taken. Note that learning a spell through the use of this feature does not necessarily mean you can cast it immediately. At first of all, Mimic Mage can learn Fireball if he is hit by it and passes the Charisma save, but he will not be able to cast it until he reaches 5th level and gains 3rd level spell slots. You can use this feature a number of times per long rest equal to your Charisma modifier. And then you get a font of magic. At second level, you tap into a deeper wellspring of magic within yourself. This wellspring is represented by sorcery points, which allow you to create a variety of magical effects. You have two sorcery points, and you gain one additional point every time you level up to a maximum of 20 at level 20. You can never have more sorcery points than shown on the table for your level. You regain all spent sorcery points when you finish a long rest. You can use your sorcery points to gain additional spell slots, or sacrifice spell slots to gain additional sorcery points. You learn otherwise to use your sorcery points as you reach higher levels. There's the table. And then, at third level, you gain the ability to twist your spells to suit your needs. You gain two of the following metamagic options of your choice. You gain another at 10th and 17th level. You can only use one metamagic option on a spell when you cast it, unless otherwise noted. You get Careful Spell, so when you cast a spell that forces other creatures to make a saving throw, you can protect some of those creatures from the spell's force. To do so, you spend one sorcery point and choose a number of those creatures up to your Charisma modifier. 
a chosen creature automatically succeeds on its saving throw against the spell. You can choose Distant Spell. So when you cast a spell that has a range of 5 feet or greater, you can spend a 1 sorcery point to double the range of the spell. When you cast a spell that has a range of touch, you can spend 1 sorcery point to make the range of the spell 30 feet. Now then, Powered Spell. So when you roll damage for a spell, you can spend 1 sorcery point to re-roll a number of the damage dice up to your Charisma modifier. You must use the new rolls. You can use Empowered Spell even if you have already used a different metamagic option during the casting of the spell. Use Extended Spell. When you cast a spell that has a duration of 1 minute or longer, you can spend 1 sorcery point to double its duration to a maximum duration of 24 hours. You can use Heightened Spell. When you cast a spell that forces a creature to make a saving throw to resist its effects, you can spend 3 sorcery points to give one target of the spell disadvantage on its last saving throw made against that spell. You can use Quicken Spell. So when you cast a spell that has a casting time of 1 action, you can spend 2 sorcery points to change the casting time to 1 bonus action. You can use Subtle Spell. So when you cast a spell, you can spend 1 sorcery point to cast it without any somatic or verbal components. Or you can use Twin Spell, so when you cast a spell that targets only one creature and doesn't have a range of self, you can spend a number of sorcery points equal to the spell's level to target a second creature in the range of the same spell. One sorcery point if the spell is a cantrip. To be eligible, the spell must be incapable of targeting more than one creature at the spell's current level. For example, Magic Missile and Scorching Ray aren't eligible, but Ray of Frost is. Then at... 4th level you get your ability score improvement, and at 20th level you regain, you get sources restoration so you regain 4 expended sorcery points whenever you finish a short rest, and that's pretty much all they get. Everything else is sorcerer's origin features, so at 6th level your spell mimicry ability allows you to learn a spell that was not directed at you. Whenever a spell is cast within 60 feet of you and you can see the caster, you may make a charisma check with a DC of 15 plus the spell level. On a success, you learn how to cast the spell until you complete a long rest. On a fail, you take psychic damage equal to twice the spell level. This counts as a use of the spell mimicry ability. Then there's elemental transformation. Starting at 14th level, when you see a creature within 60 feet of you cast a spell that deals fire, cold, lightning, thunder, or force damage, you may expend a sorcery point to change the type of damage dealt to fire, cold, lightning, thunder, or force damage. And finally, no you. Beginning at 18th level, you may use your reaction and expend 5 sorcery points to counter a spell cast by another creature you can see. When the spell is cast, make a charisma check DC 15 for the spell level. On a success, the spell is cast by you instead. On a fail, the spell is cast as normal. Spells cast with this feature do not use a spell slot. Instead, the person who originally cast a spell uses their spell slot. And again, this counts as a use of the spell mimicry ability. And that is my new subclass for Sorcerer. The link to the Google Doc will be in the description below. So you can use it in your campaign if you want to as well. I've been Kix. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.